Welcome to In the Spotlight. I'm Jeannie Ives, and with me is Kathleen Murphy. You know us as people who connect the dots on policy and politics, typically for suburban voters. And we typically really do focus on state and local issues. But I tell you what, there's some alarming things happening at the national level, especially with the fall of Kabul to the Afghani Taliban terrorists. Um, So this is what's happening in our nation right now. It's devastating, devastating to the Afghan people, devastating to our allies, and devastating to American citizens still over there and still in harm's way. Just the News has a really good, important article out in there. They talk about, as overnight reports depicted harrowing scenes from a besieged Kabul. Analysts and officials continue their months-long struggle to unpack what went so wrong so fast to enable the Taliban's rush to complete power in Afghanistan. You literally saw inside a few months the Taliban just roll up the entire country to now take every single major city and including Kabul. Last night was a disaster. American military looks very weak at this point. And Biden, this is your war. This is something that you've done with your administration. You should have known better. And and the, the idea that this is like Saigon in 1975 is completely true. Remember, Joe Biden, when you said that we would not, this was not Saigon, that we would not see helicopters evacuating our U.S. embassy in the dark of night? Well, that's exactly what happened last night in Afghanistan, and you know it. You own it. And yet you've been in the Senate since 1973. You've sat there two years even prior to the fall of Saigon. You should have known better. Anthony Blinken, this is on your doorstep, too. He's our current Secretary of State. Listen, he's He's one of these Harvard grads. He he studied social studies at Harvard during the, the, the early 80s when all of this was unfolding, when America was at an unre- unrest, when we were just still reeling from the effects of the Vietnam War. And here he is, somebody who's writing about current affairs for the Crimson at the Harvard, and you couldn't put two and two together. You go on to be a diplomat at various stations. You have 20 years of experience, hardcore experience in this area, and you couldn't see this going on. On? Or how about you, uh, General Milley, the current joint chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? I mean, seriously, you studied political science in the early 80s. You have master's degrees both in national security and international affairs, and you couldn't see this coming. You've been in charge or in part of the military for for decades. You have a long career of doing this, and you couldn't protect our allies and our the Afghani nationals who supported us for nearly the last 20 years. This is such a debacle, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. I could not be more upset as a veteran, as a mother of a Navy pilot who's currently serving, as a mother of a West Point cadet, as a mother of a former Army Ranger. I mean, to watch the military just get beat up by a bunch of, um, you know, ragtag terrorists is embarrassing for American strength. Mm -hmm. It says a strong message to both Russia and China that we are not prepared to fight. Mm -hmm. We're not prepared to fight. We're not prepared to defend our national interests. And I say this as someone who thinks that 19 years ago we should have figured out what was our exit strategy in Afghanistan. I say this Mm -hmm. as somebody who didn't think that we should be there for this long. I say this as somebody who cares about the Afghan people and does not want anybody to live in a totalitarian state, Mm -hmm. but also recognizes growing up at that same time frame as Anthony Blinken, as General Milley, as somebody who was heavily involved right. in studying national security interests in the when I was a, a cadet at West Point and then served in Germany, served a, a, under a time when it was basically we're going to beat back the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. you know, uh, during that time frame, served when we had totalitarianism and communist regimes in, in effect. And I say this knowing full well that we should have understood what Afghanistan was all about a long time ago and understood what our exit strategy is. I don't agree that we should have a long-term military presence there. However, you don't withdraw in this way. You don't give the enemy the ability to to just come in and have you, literally, we've got, I think we've got, if you're watching this podcast online, we do have a picture up of what appears to be a U.S. soldier literally carrying out the American flag from the U.S. Embassy at this point. I mean, this is all unfolding right now. We have stories, apparently, of people clinging to airplanes to just exit and then losing their lives in the process. I mean, this is a disaster, and Biden owns all of it. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot coming out about the leadership, his leadership and the, his the, his party's leadership 
President Biden said that his hands were tied to a withdrawal plan given the awful peace deal he negotiated between Trump and the administration, the Trump administration and the Taliban. But there was still a way to pull out American troops while giving our Afghan partners a better chance to hold the gains we made over the last two decades. And he chose to announce the, the drawdown and departure of American troops at the start of a fighting season on a rapid timeline and without adequate coordination with the Afghan government. Um, that's in part gotten us in this situation. I mean, you can you can disagree. We can people can disagree about the wisdom of keeping American military forces in Afghanistan indefinitely, um, but it's worth it's worth not, not nation building, but keeping peacekeeping a keep peacekeeping force in the region um, to prevent militant groups from overrunning right. the country again. Um, and and so he the evacuation was it was just a disaster and then you have um then you have he's 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 gone he's on vacation mm -hmm. you have this picture that the white house put up that was supposed to alleviate i'm guessing it was supposed to alleviate you know concerns about where he was he's literally at camp david in a conference room watching and the white house they are so bad that they, the White House tweeted out a picture of him watching a Zoom call Without with locations uh, out yes. outing CIA operatives in the process in boxes labeled CIA and Doha Station. Um, right. Yeah. Complete Jim Garrity. Security. Jim Garrity from National Review said, heck of a job, White House communication shop. I figured you would want to crop out the teleconference screens labeled CIA and Doha station, you panicking amateur idiots. And that's exactly what they are. And then the You are ruled by incompetence right and now. And then Fox News, Fox News um, emails Jen Psaki, White House press secretary, for a statement and mm -hmm. gets a out of office. I will be out of the office on vacation for the next. So he's on vacation. Jen Psaki's going on vacation. P Nancy Pelosi puts out a statement. This is Nancy Pelosi puts out a statement about this. OK, literally, you have I mean, the tone deafness of this speaker. Nancy, she took she commended Joe Biden for the clarity and purpose of his statement on Afghanistan and put the Taliban on notice saying the world is watching. Oh, really? Really, really Nancy Pelosi? Yeah, they're going to watch That's you why, just roll over. Yeah, they know you're watching. They don't care. They're not worried you're going to cancel them. That's why they're live streaming the whole takeover of this. I, I, she, like, she says, like, the Democrats have called conservatives and Christians terrorists for so long. They think that they have forgotten what real terrorists, terrorists are like. Look like. They're not scared well, we, of you, you know, and your finger Trump, wagging under Trump. We, we, you know, listen. There was a, there was a powerful man in office that they knew that they couldn't cross under Trump. Right. And he I got said rid before, ISIS. I said before on that whispering video that he mm -hmm. did, and all of that. I said, you don't think you don't think our enemies in the world are watching this and making their next calculations? They sure as heck are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we have not seen a terrorist. Attack. Attack. We have not seen the beheadings. We have not seen any of that. And guess what? We're going to start to see them film it. They're going to show the retribution against Afghani nationals that support yeah. the U.S. operation. If they get a hold of them, uh, no, they this are, is a loss this of safety is, and security awful. around the globe. It's it not just in Afghanistan. The Taliban will give terrorists a safe haven under. They, and, there know, is video of them. Jim Carfano, who is a national security expert as well, was on radio this morning yeah. saying essentially, look, Look, we had 2,500 troops in there, and that was enough because we had a powerhouse mm -hmm. in the White House that knew that if you cross this line, Taliban, that we are not, we're not playing games with you anymore. We're going to take you out. Yep. And we don't longer have that. So if it was 2,500 troops that was necessary to maintain some sort of, uh, of, of force that yeah. where the, national, the Afghani national government could feel secure enough. Yeah to go ahead, then maybe that's what we should have done. But regardless, I mean, I don't think that we should be there either. I don't get it. I mean, and granted, we're still in, we're still in South Korea, though. We still have troops in Germany and Europe and everything like that. But the, the truth is, if, if, if there should have been a lot more consideration, uh, like Trump said, and I mean, the fact that Biden and his administration is going back to say Trump created a well, bad they're, deal they're for them, clearly, that's not true. But Trump had guidelines. He had markers. He said, if you cross this line, we're going to do that. And yes. in fact, the Taliban 
Ryan did step up a tax just about a month or so, or, or, or back when uh, Trump was in charge mm-hmm. a few months ago. And um, what did he do? He went ahead and he did a bombing raid on them, mm-hmm. so showing them who's in charge still. It, this is a problem. Well, on Sunday, there was a call between top Biden officials and Senators Lindsey Graham and senators. When Lindsey Graham asked uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and My- Milley whether in light of recent events, they will revise an assessment th- to Congress in June of a medium risk of terrorist groups reconstituting in Afghanistan within two years. And Milley responded, yes. And that one of the things contributing to that we're going to there. First of all, they're leaving tens of thousands of people behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and the timeline in terms of the threat has accelerated. But contributing to the accelerated timeline is the mass releasing of hundreds of prisoners from their confinements by Taliban soldiers, with the Taliban claiming that it freed many uh, high value detainees from Bag- the Bagram Air Base where many members of Taliban and Al- Al-Qaeda were being held. So these yes, are some of the went, world's biggest They terrorists. went from Guantanamo Bay, Gu- 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 Guantanamo Guantanamo Bay okay, where we had captured them in the mm-hmm. initial war on terror and held them mm-hmm. and then released them in various negotiations mm-hmm. over time frame. And then they, got, they were taken up into Afghanistan, mm-hmm. held there for a while, and now they're all released. Yeah. And I've, I'm hearing up to 5,000 of these prisoners are going to yeah. be released or have already been released yeah. into um, the Afghanistan countryside. Yeah. Who knows what's going to it's happen with terrifying. that? It, it is. It's really terrifying. It's terrifying for the women and the children, especially in Afghanistan. Who are going who have, to be particularly punished? Uh, yes, under I mean this they're going to they're going to in turn put in Sharia law under the Islamic State again. Horrible. Uh, and it, it, it's it's just crazy. I mean, but it was a little bit crazy for us to not think about. You know, Mm -hmm. to what degree are we going to be be able to build a democracy here? Jeannie Kirkpatrick back in 1979, she warned uh, us about Vietnam and nation building. And this was a quote that she from her. Vietnam presumably taught us that the United States could not serve as the world's policeman. It should also have taught us the dangers of trying to be the world's midwife to democracy when the birth is scheduled to take place under conditions of guerrilla war. This is essentially what you have in Afghanistan, uh, and it's it's uh, it was something that was never thought out. I thought it from the very beginning as mm-hmm. to what is our uh, our mission. What's the like, end game? You know, yeah. when we when we went to war in Germany, it was total war. It was relentless bombing. We didn't care if we hit your churches. We didn't care if we hit your grocery stores. We, we you know we we understood that you may have classified something as a hospital, but you're really harboring um, your um, fighting force right. there. So we. It it was total war, mm-hmm. and we have lost that sense of total war in, um, in in this fight in Afghanistan. We were never at total war with them, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, if in the military is not there to necessarily nation build for twenty years, that's not what we're there. We're there to stabilize things until a, uh, a government can come into a be- effect. And that never took place in Afghanistan. We should have recognized that a long time ago. And now, though, the conditions of this withdrawal is really troubling because you you literally have left so many people who look to yeah. America for their hope, who worked with us extensively in protecting our own soldiers. And I do intend to get on our podcast. Well, and it was an Iraqi uh, civilian who helped on to planes. Yeah. And it was just, a, yeah, it's, tr- it's Senator disturbing. Tom Cotton announced Sunday that his office um, is doing everything in its power to rescue U S citizens who are still trapped behind Taliban checkpoints. And just to give, he said, he put out a tweet that said, if you're American stranded in Afghanistan or no one who has contact my office immediately and he gives contact information the situation is dire but we'll do everything in our power to get you out it's hard to believe this is happening and, but, but a spokesperson a hold on a spokesperson for with there. senator cotton's office says that they have heard from multiple u.s citizens who are unable to reach safety um in the u.s perimeter they're trapped behind taliban checkpoints and they've given been given no clear option on how to escape the situation which it's just terrifying for They've watched this unfold, though. This did not. They did not just take Kabul. Uh, Kabul it happened in. Uh, and they didn't just take Kabul, though. I mean, they happen- took ha- it, Kabul. It happened very but quickly. They saw it's it been coming. Happening, but for about but ten, only but for about ten days. They've 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 seen them rolling up though through the countryside, starting in southern Afghanistan, for and, and longer than a couple days. It's been going on for a while, and now and they should have noticed this. They should have known it was coming. 
it's just it's, it's such a failure of leadership. Well, again. on well, yes, but on on um, July eighth, Biden said this exact thing would not happen. I'm, he reassured he reassured those people that this wouldn't happen on July eighth. You know, but he got asked the question because it was already happening in other parts of the nation, and they knew it, and they just never recognized the strength of the Taliban. And that, well, and he, it wasn't makes, a matter. Uh, honestly, it wasn't a lied. matter of ten days he that lied. he started. Yes, he, he lied. did, and and people are going he to lied die. That, that, American and, citizens are going to be killed. That's right. That's right, because there's a lot of Americans. Anyway, it's a very troubling thing. Again, I mean, this just points out to um, needing a strong, uh, and by the way, suburban, suburban mothers, I, I'm serious. This does affect you. National security affects you. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, figure out who you're going to elect next time, because we need strong leaderships. We um, could hardly leadership be in the military more of a disaster the, between this and, and the, the border government. and the... Pure incompetence. Total. Pure incompetence you could, you could in this administration. You can't make it up that this would have happened in seven months. Mm -hmm. All right. Next segment coming up is uh, Chicago Public Schools. I mean, absolutely uh, a decline in enrollment, and yet they're spending records amounts of money. What is happening there?